Hello, everyone, and welcome to our very first App Creator Chat. This one's topic is data-driven citizen development. Um, first, a few housekeeping notes um, for viewers. This is how you can optimize your view while we're watching. Um, your engagement tools are resizable, so if you need to move them or make them bigger or smaller, go ahead. For the best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection if possible and closing any programs or browser sessions in the background. Um, also, if you have kids or anyone else streaming videos, maybe tell them to take a break for about half an hour. Um, the webcast is being streamed through your computer. There's no dial-in number. For the best audio quality, just make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on and the volume is up. At any time during our session, you can ask questions. We recommend not waiting until the end. You can submit them in the Q&A module. For any technical issues you may be having, consider refreshing your screen or logging out. OK, and I'd like to introduce our presenters today in conversation. We have Praveen, who is the founder of AppSheet and now currently a distinguished engineer at Google Cloud. Um, and Munjal Sabla, our app creator, he's a project manager at Ravindra Energy Company and, you know, a no-code app creator. So I'll let you two take it away. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, hi, Munjal. Welcome. Thank you for spending time with us. It's really good to uh, talk with you today. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me here, and I look forward to this talk. So, Munchal, um, you are a no-code app creator. You're a citizen developer, somebody who's doing something really interesting, new, and novel with software. So um, maybe you could start by just telling us a bit about yourself, actually less about what your, your work, but just more about you. Uh, what's your background? Where do you live? Okay. What interests you? Um, outside of work. Yeah, so uh, I come from India. I live in Mumbai in India. Uh, background is I, I am an engineer. I did my mechanical engineering, nothing related to coding. And uh, in fact, uh, then I was I was actually into automotive, into the automotive space. Uh, did some work there. Was a racing driver. I raced in the Indian National Racing Championship with Volkswagen. Those were good years, good fun. Eventually, then uh, I went for my master's, went to the Netherlands. There I did uh, a master's in management of technology. So again, it's it's more of a technology and society focus, not much coding <laughs> again. Eventually, I started my own business into after coming back in India into the solar energy space because I think uh, as, as a society, as a community, we need to, you know, look at what we are doing for the planet, and uh, we all know about climate change and the carbon footprint, etc. And energy is one of the places where we can make a difference. There is existing technology to be mm -hmm. able to make a difference. There is solar, there is wind, there are other types of renewables. You have hydro, etc. So I started into solar energy. I learned the tricks of the trade and started working there. Uh, did my own company with with a friend of mine, we founded a company. We we worked and installed power plants, rooftop power plants for a few years. Eventually, we shut that down, and uh, since almost a year, I've been working for Ravindra Energy now. Uh, tell me more about this, Munjal. So, um, you're installing solar panels in remote areas which have uh, where it's difficult to get wired electricity. Is that sort of the the mission? Right. So uh, the thing is, in in India, I mean, most of most of y'all probably know we have a large rural population, and it's geographically a very vast uh, vast country. And most farmlands, unlike let's say in the U.S., where you have big farms, uh, farmers have large farms. In India, the farmlands for an individual farmer or family is is pretty small. Uh, Hence, you have multiple farms in a lot of remote areas, and it's uh, difficult for traditional electricity lines to be put up to each of these farms. That's where 
because there is no electricity at a lot of these farms, it's difficult for them to operate pumps or other devices which require electricity to run. So they rely on diesel, which is expensive and polluting. Uh, obviously, uh, the government recognizes this problem, and uh, with the advent, I mean, with with a push towards uh, renewable energy that the government of India is is kind of committed to, they have released schemes where they provide uh, solar powered irrigation pumps to farms which don't have electricity directly at the farm at the water source. And uh, we are one of the companies which is uh, implementing this project in a part in a state in India. And uh, yeah, so it, the challenge is it's highly distributed and uh, you are often working in areas where others are not working because if, if they were urban or let's say semi-urban or even, even highly accessible, then there would be electricity lines there. Got it. Where you are in a, you are places which are not really highly accessible. You know, they are slightly far away from, from where people live. Right. So, so what's the, that, the this is this is very interesting in that the work you're doing by installing solar panels in these really remote farms is a catalyst. Right. It's not just uh, electrifying, it's also the source of power for uh, pumping water, driving irrigation. Um, so right. it's a major catalyst for change in those areas. So that's like right. uh, a very yeah. inspiring mission that you are in. Um, right. And it also sounds like it's very challenging because people have to go out to remote areas and what's your role in this? Are you so, are you sort of organizing and managing this operation? Yes, currently that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm uh, looking at the operations part of this. So actually, it's it's uh, a, it's kind of an interesting story of how I how I got here. I I started helping this company, Ravindra Energy, you know, to design processes which would enable smooth functioning of this project. Uh, so once when I started. Looking at the, the project was already ongoing when I joined, and uh, there were spaces where there was lack of information, uh, misinformation also sometimes because uh, you know communication wasn't wasn't uh, very smooth, and there were a lot of uh, process improvements which which were possible. So I started with picking up sub processes and I started optimizing these using whatever tools were available, technology sometimes just. Old school process design works uh, works well. Sometimes you leverage technology, and then eventually, over over a span of one year, kind of I am now uh, not only designing processes that's more or less done now, but I'm also kind of helping them with the operations of of this project. Got it. Now, how many people? Uh, how many uh, human beings are out installing panels and uh, out in the remote areas to in this overall aggregate operation? Right. Aggregate, it would be difficult to estimate because we have a lot of partner, channel partners working with, us, working with us in various areas. Our team is roughly around 20 odd people. And then if you include all the channel partners and all the workers, we are easily crossing more than 200, 300 people easy, at least. Got it. And yeah. that sounds like a pretty complex and messy data collection problem in that you're sitting right. in Mumbai, and for you to have right. eyes and ears on what's going on in all these remote areas, you probably need to be collecting some right. data across all of them. Okay. How did the how is right. that how is that evolved? So it, it actually started off with with pretty simple because uh, everyone knows spreadsheets. I mean, most all the managers know how to use spreadsheets. Even even staff who is kind of lower down in the order, they would they would still know how to use spreadsheets. So it started with simple people filling spreadsheets and emailing them to each other. And you know how that can get out of hand pretty fast. So it works well. Actually, it works okay-ish if it's a very small operation where you have only two people involved probably and and very few uh, few kind of, let's say, row entries to follow. But the moment you get into even, let's say, about 100 row entries, you kind of lost it because then then reconciliation, you just spend time reconciliating your data and you never know what's accurate. And you have versioning issues and, and all those kind of issues. And what we are talking about is we are currently installing more than 5,000. We have installed more than 5,000 pumps and we do around 1,000 pumps and locations per month. Uh, so 
so we we kind of uh, grown much there so it started with old school excel sheet is going on email and phone and whatsapp me- messages but that that kind of got saturated pretty soon i think by the time i had joined it was already kind of running out of hand in in that way the second obvious yeah go ahead no please please continue. please go ahead yeah so the second obvious choice was i mean the the first thing that i saw this i was like okay we need some kind of database actually some kind of data management tool uh the the first thing was cleaning up part one was cleaning up these excel files or these spreadsheets uh once you clean them up at least at least your data is consistent because otherwise uh, you can't filter or you can't do anything so i started with uh, making consistent data of whatever we had and then we started reconciling it uh our then it was a decision whether to go with a database design like a traditional database running off some server or on some cloud or something like that or you know make spreadsheets work somehow the challenge was uh, going into database on a running project is is kind of difficult especially when you are catching up with with your project you know the, your project is ahead and you are behind in that stage if you start designing or hiring people to to design a database you will you'll be so far behind and it will be very difficult to catch up so we just focused on getting the spreadsheet right uh, that's how that's how we started actually so this is so interesting because this story munjal is what uh, i hear from a lot of uh, customers this notion right. of to manage a project to get insight you need to have clean data so you can do some dashboards and charts and just have insight but then the problem right. becomes how do you get the clean data so that's sort of one right. thing that resonates everywhere and the other yeah. thing which you sort of started to allude to when you said it beautifully is that um the project is ahead and i'm behind <laughs> and a, a lot of us feel that we have what our work in some sense right you sort of have to be somehow agile in using technology to catch up so how so right. okay so you were at this interesting stage where the project was ahead you were behind the data is messy um how did you go from there to becoming a, uh, a an app developer how did that happen well it's uh... our first approach was i mean we never thought about the app initially because uh, once we cleaned up the data at least the data that we had clean as in it wasn't what i mean by clean is it's consistent it might not be accurate but it was consistent once i had data in a consistent format then my endeavor was now i need to first catch up to my project and then ensure that accurate data keeps coming and i don't lose the gains i have made uh we kind of thought about you know maybe uh, again excel sheets and people at the end of the day every individual sending some report in and uh, some person sitting in the head office just collecting all these reports and you know just plugging in the data so that at least it's, it remains clean that was the end but then uh, obviously a little more thought and we we came to know that that is a big problem because accountability goes for a toss uh if some wrong data has been entered i don't really know where it has come from or what's happening with it and uh, i can't do any kind of business intelligence i can't kind of penalize people or let's say people or 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 people who are lagging behind or underperforming i can't incentivize can't do anything and uh, it's it's difficult then to manage a project because if you need to have a carrot and a stick to to be able to handle some kind of uh you know when you have a large team so that was our our issue and we we were then okay we need some way to log all of this and the uh, app would work because these guys the we we spoke with our, our the guys in the field right you know what can we do these these are our ideas and their consistent problem was that uh, sometimes we are traveling we're not always sitting at a desk we don't necessarily have a laptop at all the all times we are on a on a motorcycle or in a car and maybe the battery has died and i don't have power so at that point in time so many issues that i can't reliably every day give you the data that you want and uh, me being me i just 
or let's say as an admin person or someone sitting in the head office, I want more and more data on every stage, uh, you know, to be able to control any kind of project. I mean, that's what our whole team wanted, right? Uh, so that's how we came up. We need something mobile. Now you can't run Excel sheets of mobile. You can, but it doesn't work. Uh, started searching and the first thing I came across was app sheet. Uh, I was like, okay, time to give it a go. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work. But anyways, nothing worked at, at this moment. And that's that's how I ended up with app sheet. So that's interesting. So you said, okay, so we need an app. Um, you searched on the online. Um, you found an app sheet. And he said, okay, let me try and figure out how to build an app with this thing to solve my problem. Um, right. uh, what was that? Was that a sort of, I guess you have a background in, you know, managing technology. So it, the technology itself didn't scare you off. And what was your experience like in terms of uh, how long did it take from that time till you had something working that you could show your colleagues? Two days. Two days? Yeah. Did you do it in the uh, weekend? Like we, we meet people who are like, you know, I just did it in the weekend because, um, you know, I was just, it was just bugged by how much, how, how much friction there was. So I just went and tried something out. Was that you? Was that, does that yeah. say, tell your story as well? That's exactly what I, what I am. I just spent like a lot of time on my weekend. I was like, okay, I need to just get this off my list. This is becoming, you know, because every time I, I felt I was, or we were to close and the project would again go ahead. Project would just keep, we were just running behind. And so I was like, let's just get this done somehow, anyhow. Luckily for me, the only reason this was possible is I already had clean data. My spreadsheet design, yeah, I mean, 101 of database of spreadsheet, don't run a database of a spreadsheet. Everyone will tell you this. But Honestly, that's the easiest, fastest way to get things going. And then you can migrate to a proper database. So at least my spreadsheet was was nice and clean. And hence, I did not have problem integrating it with, uh, with the tools that were available. Because if your data is not clean, it's impossible. You would just spend time cleaning it. So in a couple of days, you had something initially working. You showed it to your colleagues. Um, what was sort of the reaction? Was the reaction like, Munjal, we didn't know you're a software engineer? Or um, uh, was the reaction, um, yeah, I'm just sort of curious to understand, you know, you go home on a Friday, uh, you're the manager managing the process, you come back Monday with an app you built. <laughs> what did people think of that? Unfortunately for me, uh, my teammates are not much into reactions, so they're like, hmm, okay, good. <laughs> but uh, on a, yeah, I mean, you have some people who are like really excited, but these guys are, are very methodical in, in their approach. Anyways, I mean, jokes aside, uh, it was, uh, we were already, we knew we wanted an app. Uh, and uh, we have actually, spoken with one or two people on maybe they could build an app and uh, for us uh, on a commercial basis and uh, i i actually was like okay maybe that will take time i could probably learn because what i wanted was very basic initially i could probably learn it by my own in in let's say a week and then it would be done uh, that was my thought process. I actually started looking at how to build an app, saw a ton of videos, so everything. I was like, okay, this this probably will take more time than than I imagined it would. There was just so much to it. Luckily, I came across this, and uh, it was just pure luck. I it really was my only. I, it was a literal search of easy app development. It literally, I think, it was something like that. Okay, so you try you considered going the traditional writing code, becoming a software developer route, um, and then you sort of hit on this no code thing, but on back almost by accident. Well, sounds like directed yeah. accident because you searched for it. Um, yeah. uh, so that was then you got started. What is the app? That was some months ago, I take it. What does the app do now in terms of what functionality does it provide for your operation? So in terms of pure functionality, all it 
it's uh, what it does is it so there are when i let's say i want to install something at an xyz place okay i already have the detail of where i want to install so what it does is is it allows i have all the let's say beneficiaries as we call them these are the people who will get these bumps the whole data is on the app of uh, their name location uh, etc what and then there are it's there are some a few toggles which is tog- kind of things which various uh, users can can click which would kind of update status uh, of of the progress so the guy at the warehouse the moment he sends this material in addition in addition to doing the paperwork that is invoicing and etc what he does is he goes on to the app and he clicks dispatch dispatched against whoever he has sent material to this material reaches the destination and the moment it is installed the the manager there at the end of the day once he gets information from his team uh which generally comes via whatsapp because we can't uh, have this app running on third parties we are not doing that right now the actual installation is done by by third parties so they get whatsapp information but every manager has only 10 15 so it's manageable and he does he just clicks installed on on whatever was installed later on the same way when they submit a bill when they get a payment etc got it the important thing here is it's not only yes and no that i'm collecting but i'm collecting when did they do this that's and right. that is what allows me to do a lot more so i know yeah. who clicked and when they did it this is really interesting we see this in quite a few uh of our customer applications the recording when recording where and recording yeah. who um so right. that you're getting every step of the process being captured um whether they're offline or online doesn't matter it still captures it that's a really um uh, we see this by the way munjal and you are a process owner and that's yeah. what we see actually well, whatever the line of work is in your case it's solar panels whether it's factory floor construction um the notion of the process that you want to in your head that you believe is going on now you're able to capture and track and see so yes. um Exactly. So, exactly. So, since the first couple of days where you b- built this initial thing, how many times have you gone back to uh, to add um, more features or make changes or capture more information? Is that was it a one and done? Quickly built this thing and you're done, or is it a continuously evolving thing? So, uh, it wasn't one and done for sure. Uh, we built the first prototype. We rolled it out. Uh, we then, the moment we knew that now we have the power to do this. uh we wanted to do more so initially it was just one or two things that we were doing and then we built some intelligence into it it wouldn't allow a certain thing to happen if some a certain other thing did not happen because then you know the 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 kind of icon won't come up or the or the switch won't come up if certain other press uh, uh, let's say processes are not done yet so we could build that so we built that and then we were like okay now if what if they make a mistake so we need some way to reverse but accountability while reversing because i don't want anyone to just reverse stuff because then you know one i won't have good data so we built that then we realized okay now i want something completely different which is another problem but which is related to this so i started putting that in so it took around one or two months of constant tinkering and then and then since then we kind of i've never gone back it just worked uh never had an issue awesome that's great any um uh, any advice you may have do you have any advice for people um you know anywhere in the world who are in you know running some process of their own um from just from your experience here um what you know do you, do you want to spend a minute giving you know what you have learned and what you advise them on what they can do uh in terms of advice i think uh, i can just say what works for me and probably works for you probably for a lot more people the first thing is you need to break down your process or whatever your idea is into into small chunks you try to implement too much and it just won't happen just target one problem at a time solve it move on to the next one a lot of problems are 
obviously interlinked but you start solving one by one and automatically then you know your team will get a hang of it of what to expect i think that works because buy in of the team is very important you can do what you want but if they don't use it it's not going to work and the second piece of advice would be that i think every let's say process person or any process owner as uh, as you call it should uh, know how to organize data well the moment your data is organized you can do a lot more with it if the data is even slightly messy a lot of the tools available um, just won't work just won't work you you need to learn and read up on how to organize data in a very structured structured manner i think that's 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 the key yeah that makes a ton of sense i think sometimes we call it data modeling or data organization and it's just capturing your your model of the world needs to be captured into a spreadsheet a database or whatever it is in terms right. of it's the same concepts right. the same properties right. um right absolutely and that's where your your structuring the world you're running and that makes a right. that's exactly what the process owner has to do um so muncha some might say somebody watching this interview might say um Here's a person who's innovative, taking risk with technology and doing cutting edge things. But that's because he was a race car driver. Of course, he's a high risk guy. Yeah. Um, do you view yourself and your work as a person on the cutting edge, doing high risk things, or do you view yourself as, no, this is just obvious table stakes for what a person like me should be doing in this current, you know, in 2020? Of course, I should be using technology. Do which? Where do you see yourself in, in you know, just with your experience of what you've done here? uh somewhere in the middle you can't take large risks when when a lot of work is at stake right a lot of other stakeholders are there you can take risks with yourself uh that is possible but you can't take risks when uh, when so many stakeholders are involved livelihoods are involved uh if the process breaks i take a risk and it breaks oh it, it would be a mess a uh, financial mess and personal mess because these these farmers are expecting me to come and install those pumps if my process breaks they don't get a pump on time they miss the they their crop dry, dies so that doesn't work right i i need to get it to work so somewhere in the middle you you should be willing to try new stuff out but you can always have fail safes uh, you should always have fail safes like your existing system works you build on top of it you if you just change from a to b uh, you you're setting yourself up for trouble and uh, e, for the racing driver uh, reference just uh, just as information I, i would say racing drivers aren't really big risk takers because uh, yeah it's it's a very calculated uh, sport the way we go about it yes obviously there is a risk involved uh, you can enjoy yourself and die but really we are not thinking about that that's why you don't think probably it's that risky well, that makes a lot of sense um you know you are the closest i've come to race driving so um yeah. uh, you know it, it's it's quite a thrill to talk to you just about it um well right well, well, you know um uh, first thank you this is really actually terrific to learn about your story um what you said about that you feel responsible for your the people you're serving your customer the farmer that if you your if what you're doing doesn't work out right it affects more than just you and your team it affects the eventual people in a way that's actually how we feel also about uh, what we are building is just some infrastructure that allows you to go be innovative um right. and it's been sort of the essence of why we did appsheet and why we continue to do it is um because it's amazing to hear stories like yours and what you're able to do with it and translate from your ideas to impact so uh, thank you for sharing today really appreciate it yeah, uh you're welcome and uh, thank you this was it was good talking with you it was, i it's fun sharing a story and i hope uh, it helps someone uh, in a, in 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 a certain way yeah thank you manjal nancy uh, back to you